Hi. Hi. We're talking about the uh, IPS hybrid system today, and um, I see a significant step um, for in the the decision to, to implement a hybrid system was taken mm -hmm. under your leadership. Yeah. And I understand it was because of the requirements of the commercial shipping mm -hmm. in Norway and so on, but what role did the yachting industry place in this decision? Well, the, the launch we did uh, last year is for the first hybrid concept based on our uh, IPS, IPS driveline. Mm -hmm. And the IPS driveline is uh, present both on the commercial side, of course, commercial vessel operations, but also on the leisure side. And we see that the platform that, that we have developed is, is usable, usable on both. Uh, whereas it comes to the business case and the real driver, I think the commercial side of, of shipping is, is more ahead when it comes to electrification. Yeah. You see fast going ferry vessels, uh, et cetera, et cetera, where you have uh, viable business cases already today. Uh, but also on the, on the leisure side, uh, slow, uh, uh, slow moving vessels uh, no, or emission free movements in and out of harbor, mooring in delicate areas, etc., yeah. are use cases that are also coming around. So both of those are drivers behind our, our efforts to you know, present the first hybrid driveline. And you're planning to target also the leisure boat market more and more with... Eventually, that, that's, our, that's our target. Okay. Uh, the IPS platform as such is versatile between commercial yeah. and, and leisure. Yeah. When this system become established uh, also in the leisure boat market, uh, would it be necessary to, to adapt the electrical infrastructure? in the marinas and in the harbors? Um. Uh, it's a good question, but I, but I think if we look at the passenger car industry, uh, what has happened there is that the, the electric infrastructure to charge uh, really uh, has developed and, and needs development. You have both the, the fast charging side, which needs uh, dedicated chargers, and then you got slow charging, so to say, using the, the regular nets. We know that uh, in marinas the electric infrastructure is, is varying a lot yes. and, and I, so, so I'm sure that will be an area of, uh, of focus uh, when we will see more electric vessels out, uh, out on the waters. It will also drive different kind of solutions, I think, where it will, in some applications you will need your own gen sets also for, yes. uh, okay. for recharging and so on, where the infrastructure is not really, uh, really present. Okay. So it will depend on the, uh, on the application. On the also. application and on yeah. the marina. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you compare the cost framework between a classic combustion engine installation and this hybrid system, mm -hmm. can you say something about the, the difference? I think that that's uh, something for the use case because it depends on how you use it, how mm -hmm. you balance between the, the electric cost and, and how you charge uh, and what your drive cycle is. But generally, I would say that the a hybrid system is higher priced than a regular driveline, yes. driven very much by the battery cost today. But we'll see uh, quite fast movements on, on the different cost items uh, in this market as well. Okay. Um, in the moment, uh, currently, a Volvo Penta hybrid system is only planned for the, for the bigger units, mm -hmm. um, according to the commercial shipping. Is uh, there a timetable to plan it for smaller units, for, especially for sailing yachts? Mm -hmm. and, uh, something like that, smaller motor yachts, shaft drives. We, we, don't have a, we don't have a timeline for it, as mm -hmm. per your question, but of course the evolution is, is towards more electric solution in a broader part of the marine market. Uh, what, what we spent uh, a lot of time on before deciding to start with the IPS was to look at all the different applications and different niches of the marine market that we serve, uh, taking the capability of the technology uh, looking at the usage patterns on how the, the, the boaters use the boats and, and trying to understand where can we build the first viable business cases and what are the uh, you know, expected timelines to commercialization with all the different niches. And then we decided let's start on the IPS platform with our unique infrastructure there. We think we can provide a lot of benefit short term to the market. Okay. And then there will be an evolution towards uh, yeah. more electric. We see there are some uh, manufacturers uh, who are uh, specialized in purely uh, electric uh, propulsion systems, uh, especially for smaller units. Uh, do you think they have a little technical advantage over Volvo Penta at the moment? I mean, if you have started early, normally you get an advantage because you learn along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also very different kind of solutions and applications in the smaller for smaller vessels or for, uh, for leisure, for example, in a sailboat compared to a more bigger yacht or even a commercial one. So it really depends on, you yeah. need to learn your segment. I think it's really, uh, really important. And the application in this case is very, very important to understand well. Okay. You adapt some technical uh, specifications from, from other parts from Volvo Penta to this um, electrical 
uh, shipping propulsion. Uh, from we have our, our we are part of the broader Volvo Group, and Volvo Group has commercialized applications in buses, uh, construction equipment, and also the first launches on the trucking side is mm -hmm. is now uh, going towards the market. Uh, in the group, we, we use a joint development platform and joint competencies. So, for example, the battery packs that we are looking at using for the IPS hybrid are the similar battery packs that are used already today in commercial buses. This gives us a lot of insight on the capability of the technology, how it's used, what's the charging cycles. Okay. So we, we love our colleagues in that sense and we bring in all the knowledge uh, to our business and, and it gives us a head start, I think, in, in uh, electrification. And relating to your previous question, we also have a long period of time of development for electric exactly. drive lines yes. as a general. So we have a lot of uh, competence in the group and specifically for the size of applications where we are actually mm. strong today on the combustion side. So it's a really good fit uh, yeah. what's being done in the group and that's a great benefit for us. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think, what is currently the, the biggest technical um, challenges in the development of, of uh, new and alternative uh, propulsions, electric propulsions? I think the, the I wouldn't call it the, the biggest challenge, but as Peter has been talking about, understanding the applications and okay. make sure not to push technology out to the market just for the sake of technology, but making sure that it actually provides a benefit and, and additional features to the customer. I think that that's the that's when we when we do that in a, in a good way. That's when we bring new boaters on the water. We bring better solutions to the customer. So that's really the, the challenge and where we spend most of our time in making sure that we, we do something better with these applications. It gives us additional additional features. Then, then of course you have the generally debated uh, challenges like battery capacity, battery cost, uh, charging infrastructure, but those are common across all the industries which are which are becoming electric. So we, we really try to try to take what's what's known about the technology, mm -hmm. use what's there and then provide a better use case or even better use case for the customer. That's that's what we strive for all the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.